And welcome to Hannity. And tonight we are broadcasting from the South Texas airport. We're only a few miles from the U.S.-Mexico border, where for the entire hour we will be joined by the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, along with the Texas governor, Greg Abbott. And we'll also ask the president about some other questions, other issues of the day. But, of course, Donald Trump, no stranger to the southern border, after his predecessor, Barack Obama, left him with an absolute mess. President Trump, he made it his top priority to secure our nation's borders. And that means enforce laws, protect our sovereignty, protect our borders. He restricted asylum cases. He stopped Obama's disastrous catch and release program. He instituted what was known as the stay in Mexico policy for new migrants. He negotiated deals with several Latin American countries to expedite the deportation of illegal immigrants. He successfully built nearly 500 miles of new border wall. And this is important because he told migrants around the world, do not come to America illegally. He was very clear, don't make this dangerous trip. Don't send your children unaccompanied through Mexico, across the Rio Grande and the desert into the border. Make no mistake, President Trump's actions and rhetoric were as effective as they've ever been. For example, look at this headline, quote, Trump immigration policy showing results with the illegal border crossings plummeting. Here's another from Axios. Illegal border crossings continue to fall as U.S. enforces asylum agreements. And another quote, like them or not, Trump policies are reducing illegal immigration. Now, sadly, just after Joe Biden was sworn in, he reversed almost all of President Trump's border policies. Now, you might remember this. It was after Biden and Harris. They told migrants, oh, come to America. Come seek asylum in America. On the campaign trail, Biden literally telling migrants to surge the border. Let's play the videotape. What I would do as president is several more things, because things have changed. I would, in fact, make sure that there is, we immediately surge to the border. All those people are seeking asylum. They deserve to be heard. That's who we are. We're a nation that says, if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. Uh, president Sippy Cup seemed a little more alert back then in 2019. <laughs> now, the results of Biden's border surge have been catastrophic. In February, illegal immigration more than tripled. 100,000 Ill illegal immigrants apprehended in February, 170,000 in March, 178,000 in April, and a whopping 180,000 in May. And by the way, that's only the number of people we caught. There are record-setting numbers, a 30-year high for illegal immigration. And get this, more unaccompanied minors are now crossing our southern border than ever before. It is a crisis of a monumental scale. Border Patrol agents, I spent a lot of time with them today. They are overwhelmed, overworked, dangerous cartels. They are making millions in human trafficking and taking advantage of the fact that all the resources are being used to basically process people illegally into the country. That gives free reign to the drug dealers, the human traffickers. We know where 90% of America's heroin comes from, our southern border. We know the fentanyl crisis. We know the number of deaths that happen each and every week, about 300 all across America because of these drugs. Migrant facilities now operating at over 300% capacity. And with the help of the Biden administration, illegal immigrants are being relocated all over the U.S. in exchange for a mere promise to show up to a late court date if that date is even given out. This crisis has no end in sight. But instead of reinstating the successful policies of Donald Trump, well, Joe Biden, he punted all border duties to his vice president, Kamala Harris, who for months and months flat out refused to even visit. When she finally decided to make a stop in Texas, well, she had time to stop by El Paso for a couple of hours on her way to Los Angeles. Uh, one big problem, El Paso is not where the current crisis is happening. It's happening right here where we are. And according to a new Harvard-Harris poll, voters now rate Kamala Harris's performance on immigration as poor. The same poll shows that 68 percent of voters believe the Biden administration that they are to blame for this surge. 61 percent also blaming Biden for the surge of 
unaccompanied minors. 55% think Donald Trump's border policies never should have been undone. 80% think illegal immigration is a serious issue, but it's not clear that the Biden administration is able or willing to secure our southern border. Actions, they speak louder than words. And to that end, during his presidency, Donald Trump visited the southern border all by himself six times. Joe Biden has never visited, not once. Just think about that. Now, tonight, we're here of the crowd of great Americans, including many friends of President Trump. I see my friend Louis Gohmert is in the crowd. Congressman Billy Long, he is here with us. Governor Abbott will join us on this stage. But first, joining us right now, right here in South Texas, the 45th President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. <laughs> Seat, sir. Nice. Okay, I just have one minor complaint. I did not get that reaction when I came out. Thank you. Mr. President, it's great to have you. Hi, Sean. Boy, you know, I guess one question. Um, if I ask this crowd, uh, do you miss them yet? I think I know the answer. From day one, the day you and Melania Trump came down that escalator, you talked about securing our country's borders. You had to fight hard to get the money to build 500 miles of wall, yeah. to stay in Mexico policy. You built the wall. You ended catch and release. Now we see what's happening, your reaction to all of it. Well, there has never been a better time six months ago, and there's never been a worse time. We had the tightest security. You could come into our country legally. But you know what else we were stopping? Massive amounts of drugs, human traffickers, bad, bad people, criminals. They're emptying their jails into our country. You know, other countries are emptying their jails into our country. We never had it better, and now we've never had it worse. In the history of our country, I just saw, we were with the governor, the lieutenant governor, we were with Ken, we were with a whole group, I think the largest contingent of Congress, Congress people ever at the border, from what I understand. I think they're mostly here, too, by the way. I see them, a lot of them right in front of me. But we had the largest... We have the... We even have Doc Ronnie, right? So my doctor in the White House who became a congressman. By the way, Ronnie, would you mind giving Joe a cognitive test? Uh, <laughs> uh, President Sippy Cup, I don't know how well he's going to do, but anyway, I won't get you in trouble he with these comments. We, uh, we aced it. I think I can say that I aced it. Did, so. did he get one... He didn't get one question wrong, did he? 30 out of 30. Yeah. Wow. And they did get a little more difficult after you got by 15, I would say. But I, I heard the first three questions are, is it a giraffe or an elephant, right? Well, you know, that's what the fake news does. They take the first two or three questions yeah. and, they put that, and they put them in. But let me tell you, they would not get those last 15 right, certainly not the last 10, that I can tell you. But anyway, but we have... Uh, we have a border that's very bad right now and very dangerous for our country. And uh, fortunately, we have a lot of great people in Texas, in particular, the job they're doing. Is, uh, you know what's fascinating? All of a sudden, Biden is blaming you I know. for the current crisis. It's, it's, and it's called misinformation. It's fake They've news. done it for five years, six years. Russia, Russia, Russia. You know, I told you the story. I told Sean the story. I'd go around, people would say, Sir, do you know anything about Russia? This is what I'm running years ago. I'd say, no, no. A month later, do you know anything about Russia? Another guy comes up, sir, do you know anything about... Then I get a call from him, do you know anything about Russia? I'd say, what's going on with Russia? And it was the Russia hoax. That was misinformation. Now they're saying it was the Republican Party that wanted to defund the police. You hear that, Billy? <laughs> Billy's not a big defunder of the police, I can tell you. 
The Republican Party wants to defund the police. This just started yesterday. I don't know how they're getting away with that one, but all you have to do is, you know, the good thing with you, you take the old clips. There's no I, getting I, away. I played the greatest hits last night, sir. Yes, <laughs> I, I played them all. You know, when you, when you look at what else is happening, too, and it's interesting that states like Florida and South Dakota and I know, I, many others, they're offering Texas and Arizona support now. That's right. And their law enforcement, because in the dark of night, they're taking illegal immigrants, flying them into these states, and now the states are responsible That's right. for food and shelter and health care and education. They can't And the states it. don't even know they're coming. They bring people in, and the states don't even know. They say, here, you're taking this. It's an allotment. It's called an allotment. And the governors, Republican governors, are... By the way, you look at the well-run states. It's all done by, for the most part, Republican governors. All of them, in terms of crime, in terms of everything else. No, we have great Republican governors. We really do. So the, the policies that have been reversed, Joe hasn't come to the border. You've been here many times. Kamala really didn't come to the border. It seemed like a photo op to me. What would you want them to know that they don't know, or maybe they do know, and they don't seem to care about? Well, Kamala wouldn't have come if she didn't hear I was coming. Oh, I was true. invited by the governor. <laughs> and I said yes. And I said yes, to my honor, because we were very proud of the job we did. Nobody's ever done the job that we've done. We built over, now I guess it's close to 500 miles of wall. And we were going to build an extra 200 because we had money left over. We we're going to do an extra 200. Mm -hmm. And nobody's ever done this. And all he had to do is go another two months and the wall would have been totally completed. And by the way, they have to paint the wall. I'm going to give that job to Brian. We have to paint, great congressman, we have to paint the wall because it's starting to rust. It's supposed to be painted, and they don't even want to paint the wall. It's so disgraceful. Two more months, everything would have been completed, and they said, just like with the Keystone Pipeline, they're not going to do it. 48,000 jobs out the window, and an environmental pipeline, much better than other forms of transportation for the product. So it's, it, when you look at what's happening, and inflation is going to be the killer of them all, because inflation is going to destroy our country, the border's going to destroy our country. You know what I, I want to get to all of that. Let me... if, if Donald Trump... And we had a hard time getting video. There were even congressmen, and I know Louie was part of it. I know that Senator Ted Cruz was down here, and, and many others. I, I'm not ignoring a lot of you. And I know that... If it wasn't for them, they wouldn't allow our cameras in the new cages they were building yeah. for kids. Yeah. Now, in 2018, they accused you of putting children in cages. It turns out the video was from 2014. Right. You were not president. Now, Joe Biden is building these cages in the middle of a pandemic, high rate of positive cases of COVID, yep. kids living on top of each other. Imagine for a second. What would, it, what, what would the press have been like and Democrats been saying if you had built these new cages, which they're building all over here? But I really had that because in 2018 and even after 2018, they came out with these horrible pictures. And somebody came up and said, well, it was the contractor. He said, but I built those cages in 2014 during Obama's administration. And it wasn't Trump. It was Obama that built those cages. Got a little bit lucky. And after we said that, all of a sudden, the whole cage thing went away. But now they're building them again because there's so many kids coming in. And, you know, many of the kids are on suicide watch, something we've never heard of. Think of that. It's so miserable. It's so hot. It's like hell. I mean, I just walked... I will say, although right now, I think it was hotter in New York than it was in Texas. <laughs> it was 101 degrees in New York. This was yeah. like... I got here. It was, like, cool. But... Um, their kids are on suicide watch. Think of that. Sad. It's, uh, it's a terrible thing. Look at 90% of the heroin crosses that southern border. Yeah. Now fentanyl. We've had the two biggest fentanyl busts in the history of the country. We're losing over 300 Americans a week, in some cases more. It's the worst thing of all. A sheriff just said at a meeting we had, we had a roundtable, and these sheriffs are incredible. The law enforcement in Texas and other places Agreed. are so incredible. Thank you. And he said, and I didn't even know this, he said, for the end of our administration, we had fentanyl vir virtually stopped. 
Now he said it's coming in at levels that we've never seen before. We had it stopped. It was very tough to get. It was nasty. Getting through our border, especially with almost the 500 miles of wall, it was nasty to get through. And these people, and I gave them the right to stop people. Now they're not even allowed to talk to people. You're not allowed to talk to people. But again, people coming in is bad. Prisoners and real serious criminals of the world, murderers, Walking in, I'll never forget, I'm watching, of all places, CNN, okay? This was a short-term watch. And they had a reporter. No, this is before... I well, can't hear you. What'd you say? Oh, no. <laughs> well, now their ratings are down 79%. This was... <laughs> but true. I'm watching CNN, and a woman reporter is asking, what did you do, what did you do? It's a very famous lip. And this guy looks at her, murder. She said, what? Murder. And she immediately, they cut it off the camera. That was the end of that. But we have thousands of hardened criminals, like we don't even have in this country, practically. MS-13, we took them out by the thousands. You know, I told the story just now. We had the border. The three countries, primarily, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, MS-13 and other criminals were coming out, and they wouldn't take them back in the Obama administration. They refused to take them back. They would have planes on the runway, so when our plane would want to land, they couldn't land. They would stop the buses. And I said, well, do we pay these countries any money? They wouldn't take them back at the beginning of my... The three countries, I, I know the heads of the three countries, they're smart. They're very street smart dictators, right. okay? But they're very street <laughs> smart people. And I like them, they like me, we get along, but you know, it's like uh, business is business. You know they're evil, but they're not dumb. I don't know, they're not. Look, we got along. I said, how much do we pay those countries? $500 million, sir. But what does that have to do with it, sir? It has everything to do. Don't pay anymore. We didn't pay. And then I was called... <laughs> Stop payment. No, it's called... We stopped payment. You ever hear the term? We stopped payment. And we stopped payment. And then the next day, I get a call from all three. President, you stopped payment. No more money coming into the three countries. I said, that's right, you're not taking your criminals back. But we would love to. Nobody asked us properly. We would love to take our... We would love to take MS-13 back. They are wonderful people. I said, fine. We sent them back by the thousands. They took them. Yeah. By the thousands. But nobody's ever done that before. Nobody ever did it before. Do you have a theory, an idea? Because I, I, I really can't think of one, except that... You know, I, I think in years gone by, I would argue that there were Republicans that wanted illegal immigration because they get cheap labor. And I think that Democrats want to provide something of great worth, which would be amnesty, yeah. citizenship. And you have rhinos. You do have rhinos. Look, the rhinos... There's a lot of rhinos out the there. Rhinos sometimes, I may say, the rhinos of these people... You don't have any rhinos in this room. We've got our... <laughs> we probably have 45 congressmen here and women. Uh, you don't have any rhinos in this group, but you have rhinos. I call them weak Republicans. They walk into the White House. I've been watching for four weeks now. They walk in, they meet Biden. He doesn't know what the hell's happening. They meet Biden, he's sitting, <laughs> and they're talking about yeah. infrastructure. And finally, they walk out, they have a deal, and the deal is a cr terrible deal, but it's a deal. And it sort of reminds me of England a long time ago. We have a deal. We have a deal. You remember the deal they made with Germany? Not yeah. too good. That didn't work out too well, right? But they reminded me. They, they walk out. We have a deal. We have a deal. And it was the typical names. There were a couple of good ones in there. I don't know how they got roped in, but they walk in. Yeah. So they have a deal. And then Biden canceled the deal because the radical left said, you can't make that deal. That deal's no good. We want to spend $6 trillion. Well, and most they would of do, it... They would backdoor everything they didn't get in the deal. They yeah. would backdoor through the reconciliation process. Well, we need better leadership at the Senate level. You need better leadership. You need somebody better than Mitch McConnell. Yeah. Mitch McConnell can no longer do the job. When, when you... You know, it was a very difficult process because I was covering it every night, and that was the Congress was not assisting you for the money for the border wall, which was a signature promise that you made yeah. in 2016. But you found a way to get the I money... Did and build the wall. So what I did is I got a big military budget approved and I took it out of the military because the way I look at it, this is defense. I spent two and a half years winning lawsuits. We won all of the lawsuits. There were 11. We won every one of them. I started building the wall. It's two months from completion and this guy stops it. Yeah. And that's tragic and it's dangerous for Texas and Arizona and every other state. It's tragic. 